what is going on everybody i am prepper princess the author of living on almost nothing if you're interested in purchasing my book i'll go ahead and leave a link down in the description box below today we're gonna go over a lot of stuff it's gonna be a long video i'm gonna do my best to delete as many commercials as i can or ads but uh feel free to leave it on in the background as you you do your chores throughout the day whatever but occasionally i like to do these long videos um so I don't even know where to start. We live in a crazy, backwards, insane world, and I find it harder and harder to relate to normal people these days because I am so cheap. There was actually an article that I found online the other day about me. It said, a uh, woman is so cheap she refuses to buy toilet roll. Like, it must have been in the UK or something. And I'm like, what? <laughs> So I read, I read the article and they're making me sound like Kate Hashimoto from Extreme Cheapskates where like I refuse to buy toilet paper and that's not the case. I have bidets and I have toilet paper, but I barely, you know, when you have a bidet, you don't need nearly as much toilet paper. But anyway, I digress. So <clears throat> there's a few, not quotes, but not always quotes, but there's a few things that have stuck out with me, stuck, stuck with me for most of my adult life that really helped me stay on track. Um, and I want to talk about housing, utilities, transportation, um, decorating, you know, whatever it is that you need, you know, in order to maintain a normal lifestyle, how our society has, sh has taught us to buy and buy and buy. Um, and I have theories on that and pretty much everything that you buy, almost like I'd say 95% of everything you buy can in fact be had for completely free um, or extremely cheap, uh, like 10% of whatever number you're thinking. I've got my homemade iced coffee here with this mug that I got from an old coworker when I was leaving my previous job when I lived in California. It says, congratulations on pursuing your dream of not working here anymore. <laughs> I love it. I think it's like a wine thing, but I don't drink wine, but coffee. It's a it's a really good thermos. It works really good. Her name was Barbara. I miss Barbara. Hi, Barbara. You don't watch my videos, but hi anyway. Okay. So, um, and I'll be giving background of my life throughout here as well. So whatever. All right. So one of the things a long, long time ago, I was with my cousin Steve. My cousin Steve's awesome and he's incredibly, he has a lot of wisdom. Like he's just Mr. Wisdom. Uh, but you know, he's a fun loving, silly guy, but he occasionally he says something and you're just like, where did that come from? And he was a college professor and then he was an elephant trainer and then he was a contractor. He, he switches from jobs to job because his brain gets too bored, I guess. Yeah, try check out his resume, college professor, elephant trainer <laughs> at a zoo, crazy stuff. But um, one time we were in a parking lot and we were walking from one side of the parking lot to the other and we were passing a Starbucks. And I was really interested in a trip that he took to Pompeii. Pompeii is that place where the volcano went and then it had all these people stuck in positions and, and they still have the bodies in those positions because they got covered in ash. You know the one I'm talking about. Well, they do all this excavating of Pompeii and they find, you know, aqueducts and, and beautiful murals and uh, all this other stuff. And he was telling me about, like for instance, a, bu a buffet, like you go to Panda Express and they have those walks, right? Those, those round circles and they just take their walk and they put it in there and then they serve you the buffet, right? Well, you know what I'm talking about. And he said that, yeah, they had those there. Like 4,000 years ago, they had Panda Express. Like they had buffets, like it's crazy. And I was talking to him about like houses and stuff like that. And he says, it's all, every, anything that a house is, is just uh, walls and ceiling. So walls, floor, and ceiling. And he said, everything else is just show. And the more you look at it, the more you realize that he's right. Like, so um, I'm living in this little tiny house, this 900, well, not tiny, but small by American standards, 900 square foot house. 
and it's walls, a roof, and it's got electricity and plumbing, right? That's, that's it, that's all there is to it. They had the aqueducts for plumbing back then. And that's it, they just had walls and, and anything else. And then you look at like an executive, like, so I, I can't think of anybody offhand, Britney Spears, right? She has this huge, I don't know, 10,000 square foot mansion in Beverly Hills. You take her mansion and it's a bigger version of this. It's walls, a roof, and electricity and plumbing, right? It's fancier, it's got different, probably different, uh, more expensive flooring, more expensive paint, more expensive, but it's all the same thing. It's paint, it's flooring, it's a roof. So when you look at buying a house, um, when I look at buying a house, I'm just looking for walls, roof, and a floor, right? And anything else I can work on myself. <clears throat> and when it comes to being very, very poor or being very, very rich, it, it doesn't matter because as long as, you, as you've got your walls, it, it's a big thing. Now, one of the things that I see all over the internet all the time is real life on social security, right? There's a whole bunch of channels that talk about this. And what happens is they will start doing YouTube and they'll do videos on living real life on social security. But then they start getting checks from YouTube and then they're not really living their life on social security, right? Because social security, it's an average of 1500 a month. I personally have never met anyone who makes that full amount. Uh, most I've ever met was like 1200. But let's say they're making $1,000 on social security, but then they start doing YouTube and now they're getting an extra $500 a month, a thousand a month, what, what have you. And they're increasing their lifestyle to meet their new earning demand. So when you see somebody living life on social security, it's, it's true in the beginning. But then once they become popular, they're not really living on social security anymore. And what we have a tendency to do in this society is we make a certain level of money and we spend exactly at that amount, exactly. And that's like 90% of the population. Like you get a raise, you increase your lifestyle. You get, um, you get fired from your job, you decrease your lifestyle to meet wherever it is. And what I do is I, since my 20s, I live here. Now my income goes like this. It, it goes up and up and up and up, but I stay here, you know, up and up, stay. And then everything in the middle here, all this extra money, I invest it, right? But most people don't do that. And, and there's so many different aspects of this. It's even hard to put into a video. It's, high, it's hard to put into a 10 hour video, right? And I don't wanna make this too long. But a lot of people, first of all, when it comes to housing, they will buy more than they, they need. They'll be, not just more than they need, they'll buy more than is necessary. Um, where, say they make $5,000 a month and they qualify for a mortgage of $3,000 per month, they will find out how much house they can get for that $3,000 a month and they'll get that house. They won't get, say, okay, you're approved for $3,000 a month and then they'll, they don't look for a house that's $1,500 a month, they look for the house that's $3,000 a month. Um, and I have a theory that this all goes back to our ancient DNA. If you look and you watch National Geographic and you're watching some predator go after a gazelle, right? A predator going after a gazelle. Dave Ramsey right here, but I just picked a gazelle and a predator. And if there is, an, in the animal kingdom, if there is anything off about any of the gazelles, you can have a group of 20, 30 gazelles. If one of them has a slight limp that even a human being can't notice, a slight, slight limp, or they have a broken toe, hoof, I don't know, or they have a gash on their ear, that predator will go towards that one animal that is just slightly more deficient than all the other animals. Just a little bit, just a little bit. And you know, it's predator versus prey. Well, in our DNA, 50,000 years ago, it was the same thing. 
we would be cavemen or whatever in a group of 10, 20 people. And if there was a predator, they would go after the weakest one in the group. Whether that person had, um, I don't know, an injury or uh, maybe they were slightly mentally slow, somehow animals can see that in the wild. Um, I don't know how, just years of evolution, they can see the minor discrepancies that even we can't see. If one is slightly slower than the others, it will go after that one that is slightly, slightly less perfect than the others. So in our world, we still have that ancient DNA, that five, 10, 50,000 year old DNA. And consumerism, capitalism, preys on that weakness that is in our DNA. This is just my philosophy and it sounds a little bit weird. So <clears throat> if you were to take me and a twin of me who has different thoughts and ideas, they will go and buy the big house, right? The, so that they can impress their friends and uh, look like they are better than they actually are because in their DNA, they are thinking a predator is going to somehow get them if they look like they have less than somebody else. So again, that's just a philosophy, that's just an idea that I have in my head that predator versus prey. So we are the prey and we have to make ourselves look better for the others. And that's not just predator versus prey, that's also with the opposite sex. So when you think of women and you think of men, you know, men have a tendency to make uh, large purchases, right? They'll, they'll be saving and doing great, and then they'll go buy a boat or a motorcycle or a giant truck, right? And otherwise, they're incredibly frugal. Well, a woman is different. So a man has to look as though he is successful, he can feed his family, um, he has good genes, um, he wants to pass those down to the next generation. Well, a woman is different. She doesn't make those typically, typically. She doesn't make those large purchases. She makes small incremental ones, but they add up to the same amount as a man's large purchase. So a large man will spend nothing and then he'll have a huge purchase where a woman will spend a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, and it equals out to about the same. And what do we spend our money on? We spend our money on looking more attractive. Uh, the hair, the nails, the bannies, the petties, the makeup, uh, the fancy purses, the beautiful clothing, the more expensive brands. And we do that again because of our DNA. It is in our DNA for a man to look as though he can take care of his tribe, he can take care of his family. It's a woman's eye to look more attractive to the man so that the male will want to mate with the female, right? And so, and, it, and it's very strange, like I always think about these things and it's really weird. Uh, and a man will typically buy a house that is more than he needs so that he can impress the females. Uh, where a female will move into that home and she'll turn into that house and she'll turn it into a cozy, loving, fun home while the man goes out and kills the, kills the food and drags it home. And that's all in our DNA. There's nothing we can do about that. It's, you can fight it. You can, you can realize that that is part of our DNA and you can go against that if you want to. If you don't want to, that's fine. Um, so when it comes to housing, all right, sorry, I, I digressed quite a bit there. So my cousin, you know, walls, windows, ceiling, roof, whatever. Um, okay, so when it comes to housing, uh, I find that a lot of these social security videos uh, people will say living life on social security. Well, here's here's the thing that bothers me me the most about that. And I'm being totally candid, totally honest here. I'm not holding anything back. So you went into the workforce 50 years ago, and you you know you worked from age 16 to 65. So you've been working for almost 50 years. Um, throughout that entire 50 years, you didn't save anything, and now you're living life on social security. You didn't you know you get paid. Uh, twice a year, that's, or twice a month, bi-weekly paycheck, that's um, 52 weeks in a year. So that's 26 paychecks in a year over 50 years. That's like, I don't know, a thousand paychecks. So you had a thousand chances to save something throughout a 50 year period and you saved nothing. The social security system was not meant for us to live on only social security. It was meant to keep the elderly out of poverty, 
but you're supposed to have additional savings um, so that you don't have to live in poverty. And unfortunately, Social Security is pretty much poverty. You're not gonna starve, but you're definitely not gonna live any type of life that you've wanted to live because you already lived it all up in your youth. Um, through that entire 50 years where you never saved a penny, uh, you just lived right here um, and you, you didn't, uh, you know, drop your lifestyle and keep making that same amount of money. You didn't save the difference. You took that difference and you spent it. It's gone. So that is something that bothers me. And then, um, another thing is that, you know, the social security videos, videos start out that way, but then they end up, it's, you're not really living on social security anymore. You're actually spending a lot more than you were when you first started the channel. So, uh, I do find them not to be untruthful, but, um, bending the facts a little bit just a little bit okay so housing so i i talked to you about the housing where most people will buy much more than they need much more than is necessary um and people have a tendency to purchase move in ready houses and i think that there's a lot of different reasons for that one is that you want to just move your stuff in and have a barbecue with all your family and friends to show off your new house that's great um, but another thing is, is that with banking, so here's the deal. I've never been able to get a loan. I have over an 800 credit score, over an 800 credit score. And when I was selling my house in California, I bought this property before I sold my other house. So I had $104,000 saved, not including my, uh, 401k or my brokerage accounts, not including my retirement accounts. So I was within that budget of, I had to spend $104. Well, I found this amazing five bed, three bath uh, foreclosure with a separate like RV garage and all this stuff. It was a foreclosure, it was 111,000. I only had 104, I only needed $7,000. I tell my realtor this and, and it's a foreclosure. Remember, foreclosure. Um, I talked to my grandma, asked if I could borrow 7,000. She said she would look into it. She was a multimillionaire, by the way, and I think she forgot, and I asked her twice, and she, I, I kind of pushed that off the table, like, okay, she's not gonna lend me that. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, I, I asked my realtor, I said, look, I need $7,000 more, they won't go down on this price. And she said, I'm gonna send you to a guy who has literally never turned anyone down. He has never turned anyone down, never. He turned me down. <laughs> For the first time, he turned me down. I don't understand why I have over an 800 credit score. I went to six different banks. They all said no. And then I went to this guy who's never said no to anyone and he said no. So I, I don't understand. So that house was out of the question. I couldn't get it. Um, it just didn't happen. So with my fear of being homeless um, and not having anywhere to go, I need a place to go. I need a place to go to the bathroom, to take a shower, to watch TV, to have my dogs. And nobody would rent to me because Rocky, who, by the way, he looks huge on camera. He's not huge. He's 67 pounds. He's, li he's not that big. Um, they wouldn't let me rent with Rocky because he's a bully breed. I don't know how a boxer is a bully breed, but okay. So I had to find literally the cheapest house I could. So I found this one. Um, and the reason that the guy was selling it is because this house was sitting here unoccupied for like 11 years. And the pre it used to be a rental and the previous people like left it really messed up. Um, and then I went back and I used my vis visualization and I think of Pompeii. I'm like, okay, it's just walls, a floor and ceiling. I can work around the rest. So I fixed it up turn this $67,000 house into a $167,000 house, uh, especially with the real estate going up the way that it has. But um, I made sure, you know, I didn't buy a 3,000 square foot house and get a loan and all this other stuff. I worked within a very small budget. I went way under budget. You know, I had 104 and I only spent 67. So that left me with a lot of extra money to make any improvements on the house that I needed to. And the funny thing is when I was selling my house in California before my brother told me he wanted to sell, I was saving up for a rental property. So I bought my rental property and I'm living in it and doing, I guess, technically like a slow flip. And it has always been the plan for me to move from here and have this be a rental. So over the last three years that I've been living here in Arizona, I've been saving up my money and doing house hunting for a few months, several months, because after saving all my money, I now have enough for another house without a loan. 
because I can't get, I can't seem to get a loan anyway. So what's the point in trying? It never worked the last two times I tried or six times or seven or eight times I tried. So, um, so I have to work within my budget. And one of these days I'm going to be making a video like this and you're going to see a totally different background <laughs> because I'm just going to have moved and rented this place out. Um, which is not really, I, I see other people that, uh, make videos on, you know, we just bought this awesome rental property and, and I find that to be sort of braggadocious, but, um, if you ever, if you ever heard the phrase wealth whispers, um, I don't talk about my net worth and I don't talk about how much I make. Um, I might go over how much I save, but I don't talk about how much I make. And, and I don't think that I should. Um, I don't think that, not only do I think that that's not really anybody's business, but the amount of money that I make has nothing to do with how much I save and give to charity. And I give a huge, um, I give to more to charity than most people make in a month, okay? And, I, and that's not bragging. That's me, I feel like I need to give back. And you know, that to me that is really important. And a lot of these financial YouTubers, they, they go over their bills and stuff and they never have charity on there. I, I don't understand, they never have charity on, on their bills. Um, I guess maybe because it's not a necessity, but I to me, I, I think you have to. It's like, to be a de decent human being, you have to give back. Anyway. All right, so um, there's a lot of ways around housing. And I always get, comments and emails from people saying, oh sure, must be nice um, to do that. Uh, we can't do that here. Uh, that's not possible where I live. Then you need to move, y you know, and, and if you have the money, if you have the money to buy a house, you've got no debt, you're debt free, have a ball, buy whatever your heart desires. You know, you've got enough saved for retirement and you're putting money in there every month and you know, you're good. You're, you know, that's not really my demographic. That's not really who I talk to. I talk to the people who are at their rope's end. They don't know what to do. They're scared. They're tired. They're worried. They're losing sleep. Or they're just looking for different ways to save. All right, so let me just say this. I have made videos on cheap houses in the United States, and they are everywhere. They're everywhere. If you're living on Social Security or disability, it's perfectly doable. Now you might not be within driving distance to your family, but you have to think about it. Like, okay, are you gonna stay within driving distance to your family and you're gonna be living off of $10 a month for food and, and hoping that the food bank has some extra food for you? Or are you going to be at a, a different location where maybe you can drive a car, um, you can have cable TV if you want, satellite, cell phone, uh, you can use the heater and air conditioner because you're not, you're not um, dying, you know, and, and you can't afford the air conditioning or the heater. You know, if you live in a different area, that can happen. A lot of the things that I see at people on Social Security too, um, they're, on, they're on the channel, you know, typically complaining. And I noticed that like 100% of them are renting. They're renting apartments, complaining that their apartments are too expensive. Well, why didn't you buy a house? Well, I could never afford a house. Well, let me tell you something. I met a guy a couple weeks ago. Um, he bought a house, in, uh, an entire, $4,000 on two acres. Four thousand, and he has a house, right? And you're like, okay, how did he do that? Well, he thought outside the box, right? <clears throat> It depends on where you live. It depends on the state, the county, the laws, the zoning laws, restrictions, stuff like that. Um, but in Arizona, you are allowed legally to have a composting toilet, whether you're in the city or rural. And a lot of these rural properties say that you have to have a septic system, but the law also indicates that you can have a, a composting system. So he bought acreage and he paid 2000 bucks for it out here in the desert, not that far away. He's probably 10 to 15 miles away from the city where I live, right? And in the city, you've, you've got everything. You've got the Colorado River, you've got fishing, outdoor sports, hiking, biking, tr you know, trail walking. Uh, you've got um, bowling alleys, movie theaters, Walmart, Target, fast food, you name it. Everything's in this city. You, you, we've got everything and he's just 10, 15 miles away. And he bought the property for $2,000. Now, 
when it comes to mobile homes, most mobile homes, like I think, I don't know what the exact year is, like it's either 71 or 74. Um, they have some sort of wiring. I wanna say it's like aluminum wiring or something, which was considered dangerous in the state of California. So we're right on the border of California. So all these California residents who buy properties and have these camper or trailers on them that are like 400 square feet or whatever, big trailers, you know, mobile homes, uh, they will come over here and like literally drop them off in the middle of the desert on private property or wherever. Some of them even put them, they'll spray paint free on it. I saw that and it, I was so tempted. I was so tempted to just go over there and like, rent a truck and like take the mobile home. It was crazy because my, my neighbor across the street has like the same mobile home. Anyway, um, so whatever it is, and people just get rid of them because they can't sell them because nobody wants them because of the dangerous wiring. Well, also this guy, he had, he had some sort of truck, like not a tow truck, but a truck that would pull that thing 15 miles. Um, so he got one of these trailers that nobody wanted, totally livable, not great, but livable. And he towed it himself onto his $2,000 property. And he took, uh, two, uh, barrels. I, I don't barrels. They're not buckets. They're barrels. And he built a composting, uh, outhouse. And then, uh, he hauls his own water with, a you know, a thing that he has himself. So he'll just go over to the Colorado River, put water in the thing every whatever couple weeks or month. And anyway, so he had he paid two thousand dollars for the property. He towed it himself, and he put like two thousand dollars into the flooring and the paint of his trailer. And he has a house, like he lives in it, and he has his own solar, which he already had before. And he just hooked up a few panels to the top, and he's good to go, because he thought outside the box. Most people are like. I'm not willing to live in a trailer. I want this nice luxury apartment where they take care of everything for me. They'll fix the roof, they'll do the plumbing, they'll do this, they'll do that. Um, I don't wanna do that. Well, it's a, again, it's your choice. It's your choice if you don't want to do that, but some people have to do that. Um, and it's kind of funny that you start seeing like, okay, when you have to do something, it, it gets done. So there are people out there who are living on $500 per month. I think they should start their own YouTube channels. But there are people who live on $500 per month without any government assistance. They are out there. Um, but most of them don't have internet access. Most of them don't have cell phones to record with. Most of them don't have cable. You know, they don't have these things because they prefer to live a very simple life. And that's totally cool too. I am totally okay with that. But I would like to learn from them. I, I love to learn from people who live on less than I do, which is about $1,000 a month. But the, you, you know, the way this guy thought of it is kind of the way I think of it. It's just floors, walls, bathroom and electric, right? And he doesn't have to, to worry about the bad wiring in the mobile home because he's got his own solar system hooked up that he did with his own wiring. So he's not worried about it. He's got a propane stove. Um, so he, you know, he spends maybe, I don't know, 50 bucks on propane a year uh, for his stove. And he says that he just, that's it. He has a little window AC unit and he's good. He's good. He's got a um, sofa bed. So if he ever has company, he just pulls out the sofa bed and it's great. It, he loves it and that's good. Good for him. Um, it's not something that I would want to do, but if I had to, I definitely would. I would, that, that, if I went broke, that would be my main priority is shelter. And I'm not talking about an apartment. <clears throat> I'm talking about shelter. So that's something that you should think outside the box. Another thing is fixer uppers. Fixer uppers, you can get 30% off the regular, like what it would be. So the great thing about that is if you buy a fixer upper and you can, I've heard you can get loans for those. I, whatever. <laughs> uh, I've never been able, I, you know, I can't give advice on a mortgage cause I've, I've had one for about three months and I just paid it off in cash. And then I bought this house in cash and then my next house will be in cash. But, um, 
if you buy a fixer upper, it's not move-in ready, but you gotta remember just floors, walls, and roof. So you move in, it's ugly. You're like, oh my God, you know, gangsters spray painted everywhere, but it's in a good neighborhood. But they went in there to get, you know, it, it was a drug house. Uh, prostitutes used to do their thing in here. This is disgusting. Well, you walk in, you rip up the carpet, you put in hardwood flooring, uh, you paint the walls and you pretty much have a fully functional house, you know, maybe replace the toilet and some shower heads and a vanity and, you know, a few little things here and there. But if you're buying a $200,000, if, if you're buying a, what's the average house here? <laughs> if you're buying a $300,000 house for $200,000 and you go in and it looks all messed up and you spend $5,000 to fix it up, you already have $95,000 in equity. You could fix it up and sell it tomorrow and make $95,000, right? That's the way I think of it when it comes to fixer uppers. Uh, just floors, walls, ceiling, plumbing, electric, that's it. That's all there is to it. So um, I do wanna talk a little bit about utilities. Utilities, what is utilities? Utilities is electric, gas, sewer, garbage electric gas sewer garbage cable cell phone you know internet stuff like that okay so let's start with electricity now each county or city or state charges based on kilowatt hours there's a couple of things you can do you can not replace your appliances. Don't replace your appliances until they need replacing, right? Um, or if they're so inefficient that purchasing a new appliance will pay for itself, all right? But when you do purchase an appliance, make sure you go with energy efficient appliances. Now I hear about people who have like two or three refrigerators and freezers and I have a hard time understanding that if it's just like two or three people living in the house. Um, even if you're buying the sales, it just, I, I don't get that because you, you literally use so much electricity. The refrigerator and heating air conditioning are, and water heaters are the biggest energy users in the house. So if you've got two or three refrigerators, you're literally um, just uh, throwing extra money away in order to store your extra food. And maybe you got that food on sale, but the, way, but the, the amount of electricity that you're using typically uh, takes those savings away anyway. So I don't really believe in having extra refrigerators unless you're running them on solar. Um, but that's just, you know, that's just me. <clears throat> and there's a lot of stockpilers out there that would greatly disagree and that's fine, but um, I'm not a stockpiler anymore. I prefer forage, fishing, and hunting. <clears throat> so subsistence living, I guess you could say, and minimalism. But, uh, so your appliances, right? Um, your appliances, your water heater is gonna be the biggest energy user. So when you do have to replace your water heater, typically people have 40 gallon water heaters, 40 or 50. Uh, if you have, you know, see if you can um, take it down to 30 gallon tank. And if you can take it down to a 30 gallon tank, it's not that hard. You can just have your family members take different, you know, take a shower and then wait a half an hour. And then somebody else takes a shower and waits a half an hour and stuff like that and that will greatly reduce your electric or your gas. When it comes to heating, so I love having a fireplace and I get all my wood for free, typically from people who just wanna get rid of their wood. So I've only used the heater like once, <laughs> but I do live in the desert. So, and then when I turned on the heater, I actually had to open the window because it got too hot. But uh, wood stoves, um, are great. They're very efficient and um, much, you know, as long as you can get your wood for free, um, a wood stove is going to be a typical heater any day and it costs zero dollars. All it costs is your effort to get the wood. Same with fireplaces. They're not nearly as efficient as wood stoves, but you know, if you're going to be cold, you have free firewood and you have a fireplace, you might as well have a fire going. Um, and I love the smell of fires, something about the smell. I remember when I worked at my old job, Diana, there was this girl, Diana. 
I would purposefully take my jacket in the, in the winter and I had one of those cages that goes around the fireplace. I would hang my jacket on there every night when I had a fire because we had cut down a tree and I had enough firewood for like four years. And I would put, I would hang my jacket over there because she loved the smell of the smoke or you know the smoking of my jacket I don't even know and she would she, I really liked her and she would sit next to me on purpose and just be like how's it going <laughs> it was pretty funny but she would do that and she just she'd sit like she would be leaning towards me all day because she just loved the smell and she said it was a homey. It made her feel like she was at home and gave her like a sense of happiness smell. So smells do crazy things, but she loved it. And you know, whatever. Uh, if, you, if you have a really inefficient heating system, you can use, um, I personally use a heated blanket. I love my heated blanket. I'll turn it on an hour before I go to bed and then I'll jump into bed if I can, if Rocky hasn't taken up the whole bed and I'll jump into bed and it's just like, oh, feels so good. Uh, another thing I do is the, I will boil water and put it in a pan and stick my feet in there. Well, not while it's boiling. You know what I mean? Let it cool down, whatever and I'll put my feet in there and it'll just warm up my whole body. It feels amazing. And of course, putting on extra layers helps. Those water bottles, you can just take a standard thermos, not this one that has an open top, but you know what I mean, a metal thermos, fill it with hot water and just hug it. Uh, it feels good. I've done that with old laundry bottles, works amazing. Take an old laundry bottle and put in like almost boiling hot water and you just hug it under your robe and you're just like, oh, and it nestles up. It feels so good. Sorry if I messed up the sound there. It feels amazing. Great ways to keep warm when it comes to keeping cool. I'm sorry, an air conditioner is all I can do in the desert. And because I have pets, I have a, he's over there, Nala's in the other room, but because I have pets, I have to use an air conditioner. If I didn't have pets, I would probably be closed. I would have everything closed off. So I would close that door back there. I would close this door and it would just be this little tiny room that I would be using the air conditioner with. I would close all my blinds, close the windows, make it super efficient. I would close the flue in the fireplace and it, I would just chill out in here. And I, I'm not the type who has it at like 64 degrees. I'm fine with 75 degrees, um, even when it's 120 degrees outside. Uh, so, but air conditioner for some who have medical issues is a must. And I don't think that you, that people should skimp on that unless they have to, because it does turn into a health issue. Um, and if you have solar, that absolutely helps. Uh, so let's talk about cell phones. So hold on one second. Let me look something up here. Okay, so I have Mint Mobile. I love Mint Mobile. Hold on. Okay, so I have, uh, I'm sorry, just one more second. One more. So I use Mint Mobile. You go to good old Ryan Reynolds. It's $15 a month. The catch is that you have to pay it a year in advance. Now, a lot of people are saying it's not 15 a month, it's 15 for the first three months, and then you have to pay 25 or 30 a month after that. No, if you sign up for the whole year, an entire 12 month plan, you get the entire plan for 15 a month, but you have to pay for it in advance. So it's like $180, but it's paid off for the full year. Now I have mine on auto renew. And it, it's four gigs of data, which is plenty for me because I'm using mostly Wi-Fi in my house or at the library for my phone, so it's not an issue for me. There is also the option of Boost Mobile for, and mine's 15 a month, Boost Mobile has an option for $10 a month. If you are not big on data, that's great. Boost Mobile $10 plan is two gigs of data per month. Mine's four or five, but Boost Mobile has a $10 plan it's just 10 bucks a month um, and, and it's just less data. So if you're just mostly a talker or you have it for emergencies, that's awesome. 
um, and you don't have to have a home line or anything like that. And they also work off the off of the T-Mobile network, but there's a ton of different ones. So you've got big, big people. You've got AT&T, T-Mobile, Sprint, Verizon, stuff like that. But then there's little carriers like Cricket Wireless and Mint Mobile and Boost Mobile. And these carriers use the same network as the big guys. They're just tons cheaper because they do most of their stuff online. They're not spending on advertisement to bring people into the Apple store to buy their products and get their service and blah, 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 blah. That's the way you do it. Um, and to me, that's easy. I'm not for track phones. Uh, I don't like the idea of having to put in a bunch of information a bunch of times over the year, uh, refilling cards. To me, that's just a hassle. I'll just pay the 15 bucks. But again, sometimes you don't have a choice. And if you don't have a choice, you gotta do what you gotta do, right? Um, so they've got cell phone, um, cable, so cable TV. Uh, with all of the technology that we have right now, cable TV is literally um, mostly for, I'm trying to be as polite as I can. I used to work for a cable company, Comcast slash Xfinity. Cable is for, I'm sorry, it's for old people. <laughs> and those old people are gonna die off really soon and cable is going to be a thing in the past. Um, we have streaming services now and these streaming services offer so much more than cable TV. If, if, you, if you have a problem getting off of cable and you're paying $150, $250 per month and you need your sports, you can pay $30 a month with Sling TV. In order to get Sling TV, you need a streaming box. I use a Roku. Some people like the Fire Stick. I've never tried it. I did try, I, I take that back. I tried it once, but it, for some reason it wasn't working. So I went with Roku and I've been happy with that ever since. And you know, you talk about, there's a certain show that I like. These networks now make it so that you can buy their network. So if you're like, you're like me, right? You're like, I have to have The Walking Dead, right? AMC. Well, AMC Plus offers, you can, it, you can pay $20 for a year, not for a month. You can pay $20 for a year and you can have your Walking Dead. It, it's not, you know, the technology that we have now is just there is no reason, no reason to be paying $150 to $250 a month for cable. It's, it's a complete waste of money at this point because we have literally so much. We've got... I, I can't even go over all of it. I've got local, you know, and people say, I use an antenna. Well, you know, enjoy driving your horse and buggy to work, okay? Um, and, and I'm not making fun, I'm just making a joke, okay? If you like your antenna, that's fine. When I used an antenna, all I got was Spanish stations and um, maybe one or two channels, like PBS. I got PBS and the rest was Spanish or Chinese. Um, but I, I couldn't get any channels in here. I get nothing. Literally, I'm nowhere near a station. The closest one is an hour and a half away in Las Vegas. And we've got huge mountains in between. So I'm not going to get any signal here. Uh, but back when I was in California, all I could get with an antenna was uh, PBS. But with streaming services, I get ABC, NBC, MSNBC. Uh, P I get PBS. PBS is easy. Um, I, I can't even, seriously, there's hundreds of apps. And on each app, let's, let's pretend this is an app. Just pretend this is an app. You click on this app, and in this app is 5,000 movies and TV shows. 5,000 in this one app. But your box, your Roku box, holds 100 of these. And in each of these has a 5,000 movies. You've got 50,000 movies in a box for free. And I don't understand. And some of the movies are new and good. Um, I'm sorry, I don't, you've got Freebie, Pluto TV, Peacock, uh, Free Flicks. Uh, you can even go and get, um, you can go to your library and get free Canopy, which is, it has documentaries and uh, every, the YouTube app. You guys are watching me on YouTube. The YouTube app has the History Channel. You can watch Ancient Aliens all day. You can watch Pawn Stars all day for free. 
for free. Why are you paying $150 a month for it when you can do it for free? You just have to learn how to work the box. You have to learn how to work how, figure out how the streaming things work. And, and I know a lot of, I'm sorry to say, and I'm not trying to make fun, I'm really not, a lot of old people have problems learning things new or they just are too stubborn and don't want to. Well, think about this. You had, when you were a little kid, you had to learn how to use your TV. You had to learn how to use your cable box when cable first came out because when I was a kid, it was just like VHS or UHS and I had to go up and push the button to change the channel and there were only three of them. But, uh, you know, you had to learn. You know, you have to step out of your, step out of your box, step out of your comfort zone learn how to use it and then once you learn how to use it you're gonna be like why didn't i do this 10 years ago you're gonna call your cable company and you're gonna be like i'm done with you bro unless you're gonna give me ten dollars a month which they won't uh you know i'm done with you you're you're a waste of my money and i get all the same stuff on my box i don't need you anymore i get all the same stuff for free um i'll leave a link to the roku box in the description below uh, transportation, so I recently sold my car. And it's not that I I sold all of my, you know, I had two cars, but I was given the opportunity to do a review on an e-bike, an electric bike. And the truth is, is that, okay, for starters, I now work from home. You know, I, I quit my nine, to, my nine to five job because they were, it was, it was awful and I don't wanna get into it. But most of my transportation, my commute to work, everything like that was done via my electric bike anyway. And I charge my electric bike via solar. So it's like free, right? Um, and my cars, both of them, I had two, were just sitting in the driveway. One had 68,000 miles and the other one has 83,000 miles. Um, and I'm just like, why am I doing this? So I sold one of my cars for $1,000 more than I bought it for because of inflation and the, it, the crazy chip shortage and the, the car prices right now. So I actually sold it for more than I bought it for. And I still have a car. Uh, I've got a 24 year old car with 83,000 miles on it, but I that still sits. Sometimes I have to go out of my way to drive my car because uh, I don't want it to like the gas to just goop up inside the engine and the battery to go dead. So I have to literally go out of my way to drive my car. But I use my electric bike for almost all of my travel because I live within four miles of everything. So grocery store, police station, gas station, library, uh, all of it. I just bring my e-bike with me. It has a removable battery and I use a heavy chain with a heavy lock. Um, and most times I'm in a store or in the library or whatever, I'm only in there for a few minutes. So um, it really, really works for me. And, and a lot of people will spend as much as they can on a car trying to look as cool as they can, either to the opposite sex or some people have some sort of misconception that cars um, are, are dangerous if they're not brand new. I don't know where that came from, but some people actually think like that. They're like, my car's only, you know, my car has almost 80,000 miles on it. I need to get a new one. What? Okay. <laughs> my car has almost 25,000 miles on it. I need a new one or I'm going to blow up on the freeway. People do think like that. I'm serious. They do. There are people out there that think that. But there's great cars out there. And you can get them for four to $6,000. Uh, a lot of them have less than 100,000 miles on them. Uh, my car still only has 83,000 miles on it, but I do need something a little bit um, that transports a little bit more because I, I'm gonna be fixing up houses here pretty soon. Um, slow flips and then returning them into rentals. So I will eventually need a, like a minivan or something, um, but I'll just sell my car that I've got now and then I'll buy a minivan for about the same as I sell my car for. But I'm not, um, personally, I just don't care about cars. I'm, I'm not like, some people care about cars and how, I'm not materialistic about anything. I, I can make a house comfortable. I can make a car work. As long as a car gets me from A to B, I don't care how ugly it is. It can be rusted and discolored and painting coming off and I honestly do not care. As long as the windows roll up and down and the gas pedal and the brake pedal work, I'm good. But a lot of people don't think like that. But I would like to put you into the state of mind the um, how much money you can save. Like think about this. I literally just sold my car for over $14,000. And 
I look around my house and I'm constantly looking for different things to sell because all I'm doing is looking at the stuff. I'm not using it. So if you have a car that's worth a lot and you can do, and you don't have any money, if you, I mean, if you have money, enjoy your car, I don't care. Um, but if you don't have money and you've got a really expensive car, sell, and, and right now we're like at the peak, like you're not gonna get this opportunity again. Sell that car and you know, go with a, a cheaper beater car until the prices come down and then you can get a nicer car later. It's just an opinion. That's what I did, um, and that's what I'm going to be doing. So, uh, food. I want to talk about food. So, and I think at the beginning of this video, I was talking about how most things are like free or cheap. So you can get food for free. Obviously, uh, we've got WIC, we've got food stamps, and we've got food banks. So if you're poor, use them, please. Do not say. I'm doing fine. If you're not saving, if you are living literally paycheck to paycheck and you have nothing left at the end of the month, but you're still able to get by with your groceries, take the opportunity and go to a food bank. And whatever you are spending at the grocery store, your $200 a month, your $100 a month, even if you're down to $50 a month and you can get that food at the food bank, please get it at the food bank and invest or save that $200 every month. Do it as long as you can because there's a misconception about food banks too. They think that food banks are only for poor widowed mothers with five kids to feed. No, you know, you shouldn't wait until it's, until you're desperate to go to a food bank and you have literally no money for food. Like if you are having, if you're still able to meet, if you have like a zero balance budget, like every month, you know, you have zero dollars left at the end of the month, please, Go to the food bank and save that one or two hundred dollars. Save it, invest it, you know, uh, leave it to your kids. Don't, you know, don't just think that, you know, use the food bank. Please use it. I please do. I'm not joking. And don't feel bad about it because a lot of people use the food bank. And food banks are getting better and better and better. It's no longer rice and beans and moldy cheese. This is stuff that comes straight from the grocery store. They get new product in and they don't have space on their shelves for the stuff that they hadn't sold yet. It's still perfectly good and they will take it to the food bank. I was so pleased. I went to the grocery store about a month ago and I heard on the loudspeaker um, somebody saying, okay, everybody get all your food bank stuff ready. Um, they're picking up in 15 minutes or something like that. And they had a huge, you know, a long truck, what, what a big rig. They had a big rig outside and they were filling it pallet by pallet by pallet with stuff to go to the food bank. And I saw this stuff. It was fresh, good food. They had beautiful watermelons and cantaloupe filled up an entire pallet because they just didn't have space and they were getting their shipment in and they just have to, they have to get rid of it. And if it doesn't go to the food bank, they have to throw it away. And there's no reason to throw it away when there are people out there that are struggling and people who can be fed with it. So please use the food bank and do not feel bad about it. Please, please do that. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about just standard bills. So your sewage bill, your water bill, your property tax. Um, if you own a home and you are disabled or um, elderly, social security, low income, stuff like that, please call your local office. Not everywhere, but a lot of places waive your property taxes if you are low income, meaning that you don't have to pay property taxes. And that's a huge deal. If your house is paid off and you did the right thing, um, but you're still low income uh, at the end of your life, please call your local office, see if your property tax is, um, if, they, if they waive it for you. And there's a lot of places that do that. I know that they do it um, never mind. I don't want to say any particular state, but please call. Uh, utilities. There are some utilities like uh, electric companies that will offer you reduced rates. There's a lot of places that will offer you free internet. If you don't have that option, there are now, get this, at the local library, you can rent a hotspot for 30 days. Meaning if you have a cell phone plan, you can, or if you have a cell phone, your $10 Boost Mobile, your $15 Mint Mobile, whatever you have, you can go to the local library and rent a hotspot. And that's at like 90% of libraries now. And you can take it home and you have free internet for a month. And you can just bring it back in the next month and you can rent it again, hopefully if nobody has a hold on it. 
So that's free internet options. If you're not low income enough to qualify for free internet through these different programs. Um, I know that there's free cell phones, but I've never heard of them. Like I've heard of Obama phones, but I don't know how to do that. Like I, I don't know where you could go for that. Maybe somebody can comment in the comment section. Medical, medical insurance sucks. It sucks. All right, so um, when you, if you're working and you have a job that offers medical insurance, that does not mean you have to take it, okay? And not all jobs offer the best or cheapest medical insurance. So when they give you the packet to check your medical insurance to see if you wanna get it through your company, take the packet home and then go to healthcare.gov and uh, compare them. Compare which one is better for you. And everybody's gonna be different on this because some people require medications and physical therapy while others don't. Um, and, and that's up to you. But it doesn't, just because they offer it at your work doesn't mean you have to have it. So you can go to healthcare.gov and if you're low income, healthcare.gov goes based on your income and your needs. So um, just that's, that's where you should go to, to check for insurance coverage. Um, healthcare.gov or your job. Um, and when it comes to Medicare, Medi-Cal, and Medicaid, I'm sorry, I don't have any information on that because I'm not 60 something or older. So I, I don't know anything about that, I'm sorry. But you can probably call AARP and ask them where to go for that. Ah, iced coffee is good. But medical, here's something funny about medical and how back up, back, back, oh my, Bass backwards, um, our society is. We are the literally the only country here in the United States that it is legal to have commercials for medications. Um, and our GDP is like 40% medical. So if you think that somewhere in the future we're going to have free medical, not for a long time. And the problem with privatized medical is they are uh, bending us over and screwing us. And I hate paying for medical. I hate it, but it has to be done. Um, and well, it doesn't have to be done. I mean, if you're healthy and you choose not to have medical, that's your choice. Um, most people will not go without medical, but, uh, I'm all for it if it's within your comfort zone. And, and I don't judge if you don't have medical, I don't judge at all. Um, because I think that a large portion of it is bull, Heck, bull hockey bull hockey and I think it's almost a scam same thing with car insurance depending depending and home insurance depending it always depends but um, I mean if it one of the one of these days I'm gonna go completely psycho cheapskate and I'm gonna be like okay no I'm, I'm gonna go on like a no year no spending no spending for a year and I'm gonna take out medical home insurance car insurance electricity i'm just going to take it all out and be like i am living on nothing for an entire year watch this <laughs> and it, whew, but i've always wanted to do that i know it's totally weird but um it's not in my comfort zone right now but maybe in a couple of years um maybe i'll be comfortable with doing that and that would be something to document on youtube wouldn't it wow like yeah yeah, my toilet went out and um, I'm not spending any money this year, so I need to find a free toilet somewhere. Something like that. I'm, this is a long video. <laughs> All right, so what I have for you guys, I'm, I'm going to try and wrap it up here, is almost everything that you have been taught to buy and consume is based on our predetermined DNA on the fact that you need to believe that you are not the weakest link in the group so that you are not eaten by the predator. You do not need to buy a four bed, three bath house. Even if you are a family of six, the most you need, need you, I mean, shoot, if you have a fold out couch, parents can sleep on the fold out couch and then you can have a uh, one bedroom with two bunk beds and just stack them on top of each other. <laughs> I'm a horrible person. Uh, no, um, child services is not going to go get you as long as they have a place to sleep and then the house is clean and nice. All right. Um, 
so look, uh, you can get, you can buy a P, you can buy an acre of property for $2,000. You can plop a camper on it and you have a house. You can fix it up while you're living in it. You will never be homeless again. You will never have to worry about paying rent on an apartment in your old age or living off of social security. If you do that utilities, I have talked about cell phones. Um, I have talked about cable. Those are the two highest bills that are easily, easily, you can get them for 10% 10, 10 of what you're paying or less. Get yourself a Roku box. Seriously, get rid of the cable. It's old technology. It's going to be going out the door uh, within my lifetime, definitely. And you don't, not only do you not need it, there are alternatives that are free for it. Free, totally free. And then don't forget to call your local offices. You can get free internet, free cell phone. You can go to the food banks for free food. Um, anything on top of that is just gravy. When it comes to furniture, um, I used to do garbage picking and nothing but garbage picking. At this point in my life, um, I will not cheap out on a couch. That is the only, a couch and shoes are the only items I won't cheap out on. Even when it comes to bed mattresses, I'll get them at a thrift store, but um, after I get a mattress at a thrift store, I will buy the two or three inch foam, um, foam pads that go on top because I need an extra soft sleeping surface. So I don't have a problem getting a mattress at a thrift store um, or any furniture at a thrift store and painting it to make it look nice. But the only thing I won't get at a thrift store I take that back. I would buy a couch at a thrift store if, first of all, I would need a way to transport it or they would have to transport it for me. But um, comfort is, I am all about comfort and um, I would have no problem buying like a used ugly old orange one that's like extremely comfortable as long as I could put a slip cover over it and uh, cover the cushions. And that is something you can do online. Unfortunately, it's like, probably $250. Well, I don't want to spend $250 for a slip cover and new cushions if I can just pay $500 for a new couch. So that's just me. Um, but anything else I'm, I am willing to scrimp on it. Uh, clothing. First of all, go, please go through your closet and see, you know, when you say I have nothing to wear and then you open the doors of your closet and it's nothing but clothing, uh, you do have plenty to wear. It's just not what you want to wear. So you don't need, most people in the United States swear, I swear, unless you're a growing kid, once you've reached adulthood, uh, you don't need any new clothes because I have yet to wear out, a pa I think wearing out a pair of pants takes me 10 years, uh, 10 to 12 years to wear out a pair of pants. And I have minimalized all of my clothing uh, and I've got like three pairs of pants and that includes a pair of interview pants that I never wear. So I've got two pairs of pants. I've got uh, painting clothes and pajamas and that's it. Um, but please, you know, stop going shopping for new clothes when you have a closet full of clothes because you're just, you're just wasting your money. You're spending your money on something that will make you feel good very temporarily, maybe for a day or two. And then the value of that clothing is just going to be out the door as soon as you receive it. I think I'm not, I don't even know if I'm going to publish this because I feel like I've just been ranting for an hour, <laughs> but it's true. I promise you it's true. Like almost everything that you've been conditioned to believe costs a lot of money is not true. Um, as long as you think outside the box, you know, you don't have to have a four bed, three bath house. You can live in a trailer. Uh, you don't have to have steak and lobster for dinner every night. You can have bean burritos and fajitas and you're going to be just fine. Um, and you can also shop at the food bank. You can get free hotspots from the library. You can get your cell phone for $10 a month or $15 a month. Um, cars, you don't have to buy a new car, a new $50,000 car. Buy a used one that just runs good and a car is a car. It gets you from A to B. Uh, try and do your own maintenance on everything. Try and repair everything yourself. Save money there. That's about it. Housing, transportation, food, shelter, a couple of utilities. I think I've gone over that. Um, but only use things when you absolutely need to if you're trying to save. All right, folks. I hope that helps. All right. Do what you can with what you've got. Prepper Princess out.